What's up guys, Shane here from Zygonek 3D Printing and today we're going to check out the TH3D Titan Extruder. Welcome back guys. So I have here, supplied by Tim at TH3D, their version of the Titan Extruder. As you know, the Titan Extruder is an open source project, so there are lots of clones of it out there, and this is the TH3D version of it. He went through several different vendors to find one that works, and this is the one that he has branded as his own that he likes to use. Again, he sent this over to me to try out because this is my Ender 3, and I've had it for a while now, and it's been printing beautifully, except lately uh, it's not extruding at all anymore and I've found that there is a ton of play now in the spring for their extruder. I've tried swapping out with several other extruder springs that I have in stock, which several different kinds, none of them are able to really work with it. Hey guys, show me the future here. Uh, right now, this is a picture of the bottom of the extruder arm from that printer. I didn't actually notice till I finished the upgrade that is actually was cracked. So that's why other springs would, didn't work for me at all. I couldn't get this to work with anything else. And I didn't notice it until I was cleaning up. So this is actually a very good upgrade for me because there was actually no way to fix this. I mean, maybe super gluing it, but this is after a oh, what, six, seven months worth of printing pretty heavily with it. And as you can see, these plastic parts don't last forever. So this is why I ended up having to do this upgrade and why I couldn't get anything else to work for me. So now back to your regular scheduled video from me. Yeah, bye. So I had to sh table this entire printer for the last almost two months, not printing with it because I just don't have an extruder for it. I thought about buying one of like the really cheap ones off AliExpress for like four bucks, their metal ones. But I just, I don't know, I wanted something better and to, to do something better with it. So I didn't do that. Instead, I reached out to Tim and said, hey, I know you have this extruder. I'd love to try it out as I have not tried out his version. And he actually, we actually did a about an hour and a half long Facebook stream together, or I guess a Facebook uh, video chat of me trying to use uh, a really, really crummy, it was either Triangle Lab or a WeBot off of AliExpress that I bought like a year and a half ago. I bought a bunch of them from there. They all just sucked horribly. And I actually have one of those really bad ones on the um, AlphaWise U10 using my Titan extruder. I was able to kind of get that working for there, but I could not get any of them working for this one at all. They wouldn't feed right or anything. So I just said, the heck with it. Tim, can you hook me up? He said, yeah. So I have it here and I went ahead and printed out a spacer for it. But now that I'm looking in the bag, he includes the uh, actual injection molded spacer, which theoretically should work, but I'm actually not gonna use it because this is one that, again, this is injection molded. And yes, it probably would work, but I wanted to use uh, this one because it has a uh, actual uh, cable arm on it. So it holds it away from it and that way you can still use, I love that on the Crowdy extruders, they have that little cable clip in there. So that is what we're gonna use. We're gonna still use the stock uh, motor that came with the uh, Ender 3. I do have a pan, couple pancake motors laying around, which I don't think I'm gonna use for this. Uh, maybe later I would change to, if I was going to a, a new actual hot end carriage that was gonna do direct drive with it, I absolutely would use a pancake motor then because that's what it's really useful for. It's lightweight and provides a good amount of torque for the Titan extruder. But again, because I'm not doing that, there's no reason to waste it on this printer. So I'm gonna go through disassembling this. We're gonna get this installed. Uh, we're gonna go through, I'm gonna do the firmware to update that. I'm actually already running Tim's firmware on this printer. I wanted to try that to see if I could tweak anything more, but he does fully support this printer with his, um, what's he call it? The, all the uh, Unify, yeah, it's his Unified firmware. So I couldn't remember the name of it, uh, but he does uh, include support for his Unified firmware for this printer. This is also the printer that we're using in my 3D printing class. So I wanna also show other things that can be done with it to help improve quality, or if something happens to it, you can replace it. Yeah, you can slap on a replacement on here, but again, I don't wanna be able to print things like flexibles easier. Yes, it can be done with this, but I wanna have an easier time doing it, and I think this Titan extruder will do that for me. So let's get ripping this apart and get straight into it. All right, so I'm using my Wee Hot drivers here because these things are awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and get this disassembled first. I do use my little extruder wheel here because that really helps out. Get the Bowden tube out of the way. 
And we're gonna go ahead and just remove the extruder on top first. It's the easiest thing to do. I'm gonna disconnect power from it. And when you do loosen this up, you need to be aware that nothing will then be holding in the uh, motor. So it's going to just kind of drop out on you and that's not a good day. And there's that. So there's the extruder out of the way. And here we have the actual motor for it. And I will remove the grub screws. So yeah, let me go get an actual Allen wrench and pull those out. Pro tip, if you have a grub screw that is uh, stripped out and you can't actually get to work, use a star bit. So this is my iFixit kit and that will just grab it and loosen that up super easily. Oh, grab too well. And now that's off and out of the way. So yeah, that works out well. So this is the 3D mount I'm gonna use and I guess black on this is really not helpful to you guys because you can't really see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple M3s. I'm gonna use the two M3s that are left over from this. I'm gonna get some uh, nuts and these are captive in here. So you can actually set this down and be able to screw those on. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll get to assembling the rest of the uh, motor and everything. Well, I just realized I didn't record any of that. But okay, again, go off the guide that is uh, on their website and that's easy enough. But sure enough, here it is. So filament comes in here, actually have my spool around the front. You can kind of see a bit of it right down there somewhere. Yep, there. Uh, so it comes in here. We have our wheel underneath here to load and unload our filament. We have our knob up here, which actually tightens and loosens the tension on this arm. Pushes it through here. All we have to do now is insert our filament tube, make sure that we still have enough to go all the way across, which we do once that's inserted. Uh, it does come, yes, here it is, with a little retention clip that you can put on here so that does not come out. Now, I need to adjust the firmware, which again, it's on their website, how to do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do some testing to get the exact amount. And let's do a test print and make sure this thing actually works properly. Firmware's done. Did a print 32 minutes later we have a little Marvin. Let's take a look. So here is a little Marvin. I kind of sped him up a little bit just to make sure that it got done, but very consistent. I actually just finished reviewing this filament. It's not too bad at all, but now we know it works. And it prints, and that's what we wanted to do. This took no time at all. I cannot wait to try out some flexible filaments from other things. Probably throw a glass bed on here. You don't want to print flexible onto this Ender 3 sheet, but that's actually gonna upgrade a little bit later, and that'll be in the next video but this one I'm gonna call complete. I will note the one thing is that in Tim's, uh, in the TH3D Unified Firmware, the steps for this is set to 463 by default. I had to go all the way down to 435 in order to get the exact uh, 100 millimeter extrusion. And there is, again, there's plenty of videos out there on how to adjust for that. So please check out those other videos. I'll put some links down below. So you guys can check out the firmware. You can check out where I bought this from, again, which is a Tim shop. You can check out the videos on how to adjust your e-steps if you're unsure how to do that. And anything else that I need to put down there will be in the video description. So check that out. And that's gonna be it guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Talk me in the comments down below what you guys think about this upgrade. If it's worth it, not worth it. Have you tried it? I'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys wanna stay tuned what's going on, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Ding that. And that way you get a notification when I upload new content or do any live streams. If you guys want to financially help the channel and help me do more things here, you can become a patron. It only takes a dollar or more to access the Patreon feed and my after show. And the money you guys donate there come right back into the channel and I buy different things, filaments, upgrades, printers. It all really does help me out. So I thank my patrons for being there to help me out. If you do other ways, there is uh, some one-time donation links, a bunch of foot links down, there's some discount codes. Check those out, save some money. I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, happy printing.